to sit, please. Come and, come and sit. We've produced these chairs at enormous expense for your benefit. So <laughs> um, look, I, I should introduce myself. I'm Hugh Bailey. I'm the MP for York Central. Um, I was saying to Dr. Rob Stoneman, the Chief Executive of the Wildlife Trust, that uh, unfortunately we have been here before, 15, 16 years ago, when we last had a Conservative government, there were plans to sell off the Forestry Commission land. And meetings such as this, and writing campaigns, and responses to the then government's consultation document, persuaded them to think again and to drop the idea. Uh, and I'm pretty confident we can get them to drop the idea again. One of the things we have to remember about this is it is a political choice and it is about legislation that is now going through the House of Lords. So it's very, very important for us as we, as we become a movement and there, the movement is out there, I was in Chopwell Woods uh, outside Gateshead just uh, last Friday. Um, that we try and join up the many, many voices of people who feel absolutely passionately about this issue and become a coherent national movement. And there are a variety of ways that I think we can do that. Um, but the Public Bodies Bill gives the government power through primary legislation, which is all very boring, you know, but it's actually really, really important, in Clause 17 and 18 of the bill to sell off 100% of our forests. Woodlands, Heathland, Bog, everything that the Forestry Commission currently owns, runs and manages. And that is likely to come back to the Lords um, in the next two, three, four weeks' time. So we need to be very, very vigilant because while we're all marching and cycling and protesting about this, I think we need to make sure that the Lordships and the Bishops and the Crossbenchers and all the peers are fully aware of our feelings on this issue and that the Lords have the real opportunity um, to vote down this bill. So that's the, the first point I want to make about the future of, of this campaign. Um, the second thing I want to say is that Hugh made the point, the principle, the very principle of this, why would we buy something we already own? Uh, that's the bottom line for me in all of this. It's an ideological approach which says we want to shrink the state, we don't believe that the state should sell Christmas trees, organise pop concerts, do the things it does to bring in revenue, to, to, to reduce the burden on the taxpayer, chop down trees, sell them on, etc. <coughs> we believe that that should be in the hands of private individuals. And I have a problem with that, as I think many people in this room do. Because although the Forestry Commission estate only accounts for 18% of Britain's, England's woodland. Let's not, let's not forget, this isn't happening in Wales, this isn't happening in Scotland, and this isn't happening in Northern Ireland. So there's, there's, you know, there's principles in those countries that apply, but they don't seem to apply to England. You know, that's um, something for us all to reflect on. Um, it, it accounts for 18% of our woodland, but 50% of the publicly accessible forestry land. That's a figure to hold in your mind and reflect upon. That tells you all you need to know about the public's access onto private forestry land, which is, we tend not to get access once it's been privately bought. Who will buy these forests? Will it be you and me? Who's got six grand per hectare waiting to buy up their local one acre of local woodland? Hands up. No, I thought not. But the Confederation of Forest Industries um, have done a very good report on their website. I commend it to you all. Um, and they say that uh, since, two, I can't remember the exact figures, 2002, um, forestry land has increased in value by 158%. So, bought it for £1,000 in 2002 and it's worth £2,500 today. It's not a bad investment if you're a, I don't know, pension fund. Better than cash, isn't it? Because you don't pay inheritance tax on it after two years, so you avoid um, inheritance tax at 40% if you die two years later. You don't pay income tax on any wood that you chop down from it. Um, and, of course, you don't pay any capital gains tax on the wood. So it's a very tax-efficient way of looking after your money. Now, that's if you, you, know, if you have a, se a serious amount of money. But you know, as well as I do, that for very many people with some woodland near them, traditionally... <coughs> We've traipsed all over it, and when we were kids, we've lapped about all over it, and then we went with 
girlfriends or boyfriends and laughed about there. And, you know, all, all sorts of informal activities go on. And, and I don't think two clauses in one bill are going to offer the protection that's needed for anybody. The next thing I'd say is, I always think to myself when they say, oh, the man from Barbados is getting £8.2 million pounds this year. You think, what do they do with the money? Well, I'll tell you what they'll be doing with the money. Yeah. They'll be buying up the land, that the Forestry, the forestry Commission land that's been sold. Uh, so I think we've got to really keep an eye on that. And, you know, the other alternatives are some logging companies who are always doing such a really good job in Indonesia and Brazil and places like that. We know they all look after the interests of local people and, and uh, the environment and the future of the planet. So they're not going to be good owners. Uh, and I think we need to be very, very careful about that. My only other thing I would say is this. Just because something's an act of parliament doesn't make it just, and even if it, if it were to go through, it would be theft. Uh, you all know that uh, the common land was stolen from the people by innumerable acts of parliament, uh, uh, enclosure acts. And I'll finish with one of my favourite bits of point. I'm a Shakespeare fanatic, but he didn't, he didn't come up with this. It was a bit of doggerel at the time of the enclosure acts. And it goes very briefly as follows. The fault is great in man or woman who steals a goose from off a common. But what can plead the man's excuse who steals the common off the goose? And that's what they're trying to do. I want to say thank you to Hugh and Mary for the efforts they put in. Um, I read the book, I think, before. It was a long time before. I want to say thank you to the party. Can I ask you something? Obviously, most of us would have written or emailed in to you saying that we thought the Save of the Forest was a bad idea. How many letters did you have saying, hey, we think the Save of the Forest is a really good idea? Was it there or one? <laughs> okay. So in terms of people supporting it, there's very few. I resent most strongly the tone of this consultation document. The whole tone is set on the premise that one size does not fit all. The whole document is, is doing this big favour that they are actually going to approve things. And really, as has been said already, it's very, very difficult to respond to because we don't actually agree with the premise that the consultation document is founded upon. Was. This is potentially the biggest disenfranchisement of the public since the enclosure awards at the end of the 18th and beginning of the 19th century. So I think that is a serious issue. I think this is a campaign we can win. Uh, but it, we actually means you. You are the thin <coughs> tree line that stands between the government and the privatisation of the forest. So if you make your voice heard, uh, I think we can stop them. And I hope you will make your voice heard because I think it is incredibly Thank you very much. We've just heard from Mary Cray, the Shadow Department of the Environment, and uh, Hugh Bailey at the public consultation meeting uh, regarding the sell of the forests. Um, this is absolutely no support from anybody that attended the meeting. Uh, for forest sell-offs and this will add weight to our campaign and our petition in Fishergate against the forest sell-offs.